Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome an owner of a massage studio, which got me thinking of self-care and how self-care can lead to an entrepreneur's success or how the lack of self-care can lead to the downfall of the business. The sad reality is, is only 58% of small businesses survive beyond three years. And of the current small business owners surveyed by Entrepreneur.com, reported 57% of small business owners had above average stress, and 80% admitted cash flow issues affected their mental well-being. This is nothing new. The entrepreneurs who I am so grateful to have shared their stories on this show have stated similar wellness concerns at various times in their entrepreneurial careers. Now, if you have ventured this far down the Shades of E podcast, then certainly you have come to appreciate the tool a new venture takes on the entrepreneur. Long days, little sleep, high stress, loneliness. There is no simpler way to put it. If the business is not profitable, the business will not be successful. According to entrepreneur.com, over 50% of owners work nine hours plus a day and 43% work weekends. But long hours don't make us effective if we're wasting time spinning our wheels because we're too tired to think straight or we risk burning out completely. When building a business strategy, although this sounds extremely difficult when running business alone, try to include a wellness of oneself, staff, colleagues, loved ones, and even those you do not know. But why? How is self-care good for an entrepreneur? First, stress relief. Stress is going to play a role in everyone's life. But taking time for self-care helps activate the body's relaxation response, reducing cholesterol and adrenaline levels in your body, which helps reduce the stress, according to Jess McCollum, a clinical psychologist who runs Confident Life. Another benefit of self-care? It improves clarity and creativity. Feeling overwhelmed while trying to multitask is not a great mindset to be creative, organized, or successful. Make sure to schedule short breaks throughout the day for self-care, such as a 10-minute meditation break, a 15-minute walk, or simply reading a book. Let's be honest, if we do not schedule it in our day and make it part of our routine, we seldomly do it. We'll say we don't have the time, something I do way too often. However, if we look at our screen time on our phone, I think we can find a few minutes to spare in our day. And self-care must go beyond the entrepreneur. The 2017 American Psychology Associates Center for Organizational Excellence survey found that 61% of working Americans experience chronic work-related stress. As a result, numerous workplaces are beginning to implement wellness programs that benefit both executives and workers. And employees are taking note. Roseanne Bennett, the executive director and co-founder of Center for Assessment and Treatment, a 501c3 charitable organization, wrote, Millennials demand more workplace benefits that help them live secure, promising lives. Self-care themes may become ingrained in every facet of our lives. Listen, I work in healthcare. My whole philosophy is people want to be cared for and about. From a business perspective, Prioritizing self-care could help secure a positive atmosphere socially and financially. The World Health Organization and the American Institute of Stress estimate that stress costs American businesses nearly $3 billion annually. As Roseanne Bennett said, implementing self-care business practices not only helps yourself and others feel better, but you could also help the economy feel better too. This podcast was edited by Modern Ally, the business for small businesses and nonprofits who want their graphic design, marketing, social media, video, and other media projects done right. Modern Ally has a passion for supporting community education and social rights. The best part, Modern Ally meets businesses where they're at and works to create custom packages and services that fit your business needs at your budget. Say goodbye to overpriced, unpersonal, and out-of-touch agencies and say hello to your newest ally. To get started, visit yourmodernally.com or you can follow Modern Ally on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. 
Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest comes from a family of organ entrepreneurs with the belief that one day she would start her own business. With a background in wellness, nutrition, fitness, and marketing, she finds satisfaction in keeping her clients pampered and pain-free. Please welcome the owner of Lux Massage, Chelsea Power. Today, I am here with the owner of Lux Massage and Spa, Chelsea Powers. How are you doing? Hey, Gabriel. Great. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited because uh, I love massages. Who would have known? <laughs> so let's... Perfect. You'll have to come in for one. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about Lux Massage and Spa. Why was Lux Massage and Spa created? Actually, a pretty long story, but I've been on a journey with a variety of massage companies. I've had to rebrand multiple times. And I actually created Lux Massage and Spa due to COVID-19. We just registered that business name a little over a year ago. I found that people really needed human touch more than ever. And I wanted to bring couples closer together. And we actually specialize in doing couples massage. Oh, interesting. How does a, how does a couple massage work? So we've got a nice, big, beautiful treatment room. We've got two massage tables. So we have two massage therapists work at a time. We like to spoil our couples with fresh cut flowers, roses, chocolates, and a beverage of their choice. Nice. I'm definitely going to have to check this out. <laughs> nice way to get people bonding again. So so how did you create Lux Massage and Spa? Did you do something similar to this like on the back end or is this kind of a, a passion for you? How, how did you create it? So prior to COVID, my main specialty was actually in-office chair massage. We went around to office buildings and companies like WeWork and chair massage was great in a social setting. Of course, due to COVID, that part of my business became obsolete and I, I was kind of forced to rebrand once again. Prior to the pandemic, my company was Massage Connection U.S. And so you, so you pivoted from massage company to this Lux Massage. What did you have to do to pivot? So I had to find a new business location, which was tricky. I, I actually had signed a commercial lease around March 2020. We wouldn't be able to operate out of the spa after I signed the lease. So it was a struggle initially, but now business seems to be coming back to business as usual. We're getting more requests than ever. The pivot was difficult. I, I finally ended up hiring an amazing marketing company called Modern Ally, and they've helped tremendously. Nice. So you said you uh, purchased this location pre-pandemic. Or- yeah, it's, I'm just leasing. Luckily, I, I didn't buy. But yeah, I did get myself locked into a two-year lease just prior to the pandemic. Oh, that's tough. How were you but able to work through that? It was a struggle. Luckily, I did have enough regular clients who continued coming to me that I was able to keep the lights on. But it was definitely a struggle. I also, fortunately, did receive an EIDL loan, which made it possible as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. You know, I think I know a lot of small business owners that were very thankful for that opportunity as well. Why did you decide to start a massage in small in particular? So that's the longest part of the story. Actually, I used to have my real estate license. I had that in my early 20s. I think I was 21 when I got it. And then at 22, we were in 2008 when the market crashed. And it was a terrible time to be a realtor. Yep. I had made the mistake to moving to Portland where I didn't know anybody and just basically made one mistake after the next. I didn't have any money saved up. And so I had to work as a bartender and a promotional model during that time just to afford my real estate fees. And after a few years of struggling with, you know, trying to make a living as a realtor, I decided it was time for a career change. My partner at the time actually inspired the career change. He was a physical therapist and worked alongside massage therapists. And he said they seemed very happy and seemed to have a very good quality of life. And, you know, that it seemed like a very rewarding career. So did some research and I found out that I would be able to, that it would also be a good outlet to open a business, which is what I've always wanted to do. My, my dad actually inspired me. He's a small business owner down in Salem and owns an auto and marine shop. So I worked for him throughout my teens and learned a lot about small business ownership at the time. So I attended University of Western States for massage school. It's actually a chiropractic school that has a branch for massage as well. It was a really great curriculum and it was accelerated. So I was able to get my license in just a year. And then I worked at some 
a skill spa so after that and gained some good experience there. But ultimately, just you know, knew that I wanted to have my own practice. Nice. So I opened it as soon as I could. I like it. Now, now with the entrepreneur, you, you mentioned your dad. Now, for the folks that live down in Marion County, you know right. Power Auto. You, you, you've seen the signs everywhere. I know the car dealerships all over the place. Did your dad, was he kind of like an influence in you becoming an entrepreneur or has this something you always wanted to do? Absolutely. He's absolutely been my main influence and um, encouragement. That's that's great. I, I, you know, I'm not sure if it was nature or nurture, but I'm going to guess that it was probably <laughs> a little bit of both, probably more nurture. That's funny. You know, one of the things you mentioned too is, is uh, you did real estate. And I think it's kind of Correct. funny, you know, I actually was in real estate myself and I think one of the biggest misconceptions is it's easy, right? You can kind of just jump in there, start selling houses, but you got to have a lot of money saved up. You know, to your point, you kind of got to know what you're doing a little bit, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And I was fortunate enough to have a good mentor at the time, but I just, I wasn't mature enough. I wasn't ready. And it's also very intimidating being, you know, a young person mm-hmm. and a real person. Cause I think people don't take you as seriously. No, I, I would completely so was, agree. I actually had did a real estate about that same time. And I think it was, I was working for John L. Scott and I, I left around that 2008 time as well. Actually, I think it was like 2007 because I think I saw the writing on the wall, you know, when, when you're in the market and you're kind of seeing the way the market was changing at that time, you can kind of yeah. felt like something, something not good is going to happen. <laughs> exactly. Yep. You got out of the right time. So how did you start your company? So you, you mentioned you're starting your company, right? And you got the lease. Now, did you do bootstrapping uh, for fundraising or did you go venture capital route? So I just reinvested my, my earnings, pretty much everything I've made back into my business. And slowly but surely it's growing. But I wish that I would have done it differently and gotten a loan Why when I initially opened. I made the mistake of putting business equipment on credit cards and got overwhelmed with credit card debt. So if I could do it all over again, I would have done it a lot differently. I would have worked saved up money, gotten a good nest egg, and then tried to get a loan and invest in good marketing from the get-go. I did a lot of my own marketing and it was <laughs> not very professional looking. It just wasn't as effective as working with a good marketing company. Cassidy over at Modern Ally has been just amazing to work with and already has helped my business grow so much. That's that's awesome. And I think that's an important lesson for individuals that are thinking to become entrepreneurs or wanting to start their own business, looking outside the traditional financial avenues that are available to us, like credit cards, you know, or personal loans and looking at other options like the SBA, right? The small business administration uh, and various things of that nature. Cause those will also help you out, right? Oh, absolutely. So you mentioned it, it's Lux massage and spa. What are the kind of the difference between the, you know, the massage and the spa industry and how they're kind of similar that they're able to kind of create this coexistence? Sure. So like I mentioned, I've, I've had to rebrand a few times, partially because of COVID. And at one point in my, and currently as well, in my business, I realized I would be able to reduce my financial burden if I subleased rooms to other types of practitioners, such as estheticians or microbladers, nail techs, and spa practitioners, anybody in the health and wellness industry, health, beauty, wellness industry. And so to kind of umbrella that, I changed it from being just Lex Massage to Lex Massage and Spa. So even though they're se- separate business entities, people still know they can come to one location and get a variety of services. That, that's really cool. In fact, one of the things you, you mentioned that I find very interesting is all of the different roles that they seem to have within the industry. Because you, you mentioned a, a few different the professional titles, right? But these individuals are actually go to school to train to become professional masseuse and, and hairstylists and massage therapists and, and nail people, correct? Correct. Yep, exactly. That, that's really cool. So what, what have you learned throughout this process of, of starting your own business that may have surprised you? Gosh, um, I, I definitely wouldn't have tried to do it on my own if I were to go back in time. I think I definitely would have gone into things much differently. I, I did a lot of research in the beginning, but I, I think I didn't know quite where to focus my efforts. And I would say that starting off the right way, you know, investing a little more in starting off the right way, investing in a good, um, in good branding, good marketing, good advertising is where I would have made my changes. And you've, you've mentioned branding and advertising um, a lot in this last, actually episode and a few times. How important is branding and advertising for the retail space that you're in currently? I would say it's incredibly important because uh, brand recognition, customers learn that they can really start to trust your brand, especially when they see you know, that you have high star 
ratings. And I think that it also reflects on the business. You know, the more professional the marketing material and the website and everything looks, I think clients just feel more comfortable trusting the brand. I actually even changed my color scheme to appeal to the couples more. I made more of a romantic kind of color scheme and it, it has been drawing in more couples. So the, the marketing is incredibly important. Really? I, I have a small marketing background, but not enough to have done it on my own. I think marketing is, is very uh, intriguing to me. You know, I, to my to your point, I did a little bit of marketing at studying, but I never did a professional you know worker as a marketer by any means. But it's interesting because they look at some of these finite pieces, to your point, color palettes, right? How can I draw in individuals' interest based on a color? That, that is very fascinating, right? Exactly. Yep, absolutely. You know, one of the things you've kind of mentioned is, you know, you kind of wish you would have done things differently. What are those things that you wish you would have done differently and why? So mainly just just the way I started off, you know, I wish I would have started off with a more professional image. I had mismatched marketing material because I was creating my own on Vistaprint. And so it didn't have that consistency. I think customers were confused as to what my business was. Another huge mistake that I made was was the rebranding multiple times, changing the business name. I didn't understand it at the time, but I in the past, my company was Preso Spas and Spa, or Preso Spa, actually. And I had built up actually really good SEO and, and a really good online image I wasn't even aware of. Clients were finding me just on Google Maps and everything. And when I rebranded, I lost all of that. Oh, wow. And I had sold that business, but the person who bought it changed the business name. So I could have kept free so boss. And if I had known how it would affect my SEO, I probably would have. That was a difficult business name for people to pronounce and sell. And so it had its own set of issues. Just prior to COVID, I created Massage Connections because it, it sounds, you know, exactly what you're getting with it. Yeah. It more describes the mobile part of the business, like the in-office chair massage. And during the pandemic, I changed it to a Massage Connection U.S. because when Oregon was closed, I figured out how to send the services into other states that were actually open. So that was one big hurdle during the pandemic. And it was a lot of work and it worked out well, but it's so nice to just be focused on Lux Massage and Spa right now and just have that local again. That is really nice. And one of the things you mentioned, SOE, can you explain to the listeners at home what that is? I can't really because I'm only just starting starting to get a grasp as well. But Cassidy actually could explain it very well. She has improved my SEO. I think it just basically means your business interacting enough on the web, whether it's through social media or Google or elsewhere, you know, replying to clients when they leave comments and just interacting a lot online. It seems to build your SEO. And I don't know if I described that properly, but that's that's my best understanding of it at this point. And it's, it's probably one of the most important aspects of having a business. Yeah, definitely. I like it. Some of the things you, you mentioned, uh, you, you've learned quite a bit. What's some things that you would give, like advice you would give a younger Chelsea? Oh, gosh. I, I would say definitely start off strong, do your research. And another thing that I forgot to mention earlier, I would have loved to have had a business partner. I've kind of done everything on my own. I should have asked for help earlier on. You know, it's been a great learning experience along the way, but I think I, I would have saved a lot more time. And I think my business would have been further along at this point. Had I asked for help. You, you mentioned a business partner. Do you feel there were areas that maybe you were not as strong in that you're kind of hoping to? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not very tech savvy. I think my strong point is the networking side of things and just persevering. But there are a lot of areas that I could have used help. It's also just nice to have somebody there to bounce ideas off of and, you know, get a second opinion on things. It can feel kind of lonely at times. Uh, to be a, an individual business owner, you know, especially going through the pandemic and everything. It was. Yeah, and that's definitely difficult and lonely. I must admit, you know, I started this podcast uh, the beginning of 2020 uh, during the pandemic and the intent was really to kind of just highlight the local entrepreneurs. And one of the things I've been noticing, I've been hearing pretty frequently um, for those individual entrepreneurs is the loneliness of it, right? It does feel like you're kind of, nobody else is battling the same things you are, right? As, a, as an individual entrepreneur, maybe it's the location, maybe it's the rebranding. What are some of the things that you learned throughout this process that may have surprised you? In persevering, I was able to make it. There was a time during COVID where I thought my business was a goner. And I persevered through it. And now it seems like things are not only normalizing, but actually 
taking off in a new direction. Nice. So I would say staying persistent and hopeful and sticking with it. I, I think usually it works out. Yeah. You know, a lot of, I think a lot of people in general, right. I, I've asked this question often is, did you ever have self doubt in your business? Did you ever have self doubt? It sounds like you did. How did you overcome that self doubt? All the time. It still comes in waves, comes and goes in waves and ebbs and flows and try to stay hopeful and keep a positive outlook and, you know, just stick with it. Cause I, I think at this time I've overcome so many obstacles that it makes it easier to persevere for every obstacle. So every time I've made a mistake and learned from it, it's easier to tackle future issues. Definitely. What advice would you give your younger self? You kind of mentioned it, but what advice would not only give yourself, but other younger entrepreneurs that are thinking of starting their own business? Uh, Stay confident and and stick with it. Definitely. There will definitely be hard times and a lot of business owners have to try. Like throwing dart, a lot of times you have to try multiple times before you get one, but it can be extremely rewarding. And so just staying confident. And for me, I've had to work around the clock, even though I, I don't massage around the clock, even when I'm not massaging. It's hours of working and responding to emails and text messages and working on the marketing and networking and it's never ending. But if you enjoy what you're doing, it doesn't really feel like work. I probably work, you know, 16 hour days, but it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. And and to your point, there's so many little nuances to entrepreneurship, especially if you own your own business, like the operations piece. You're the operator. You run all the operations, but you also run your marketing but you're also running Correct. a call center, but you know, all these, yes, all these other things. Exactly. What has been difficult about it for you? I would say the confidence piece has, especially considering that I don't have a business partner. I think, you know, when things get difficult, I have to use positive talk to myself, to remind myself that if I stick with it, it will be okay. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that's a great mindset to have, right? It's necessary, I think. So for the folks at home, how can they get in contact with you? How, where is Lux Massage and Spa? Do you have social media, website? How, how are they able to schedule an appointment? My website is theluxmassage.com and they can absolutely reach out to me there or they can call or text me on my cell number, which is 503-333-3653. That is spelled L-U-X-E, correct? Correct. Perfect. And then social media handles? Instagram is luxpdx. L-U-X-E-S-C-A-P-D-X. Perfect. And so what can clients kind of expect? You mentioned it earlier, you know, you have the uh, the couple massage. What all services can clients expect um, when they visit Lux Massage and Spa? So we offer a variety of modalities. You can see them on the website, but Swedish, deep tissue, hot stone, aromatherapy, reflexology, a lot of the cool spa services that you would receive. We do offer a lot of nice ad- add-ins like hot stone add-in or CBD oil. We do cellulite reduction massage and just a really nice variety of things. Our availability for services is a little different right now because my, my team is still coming back to work from COVID, but soon we should have all of the services available. Nice. And how many employees do you have? I had independent contractors and I had probably, I'd say about 15 of them prior to COVID. Oh, wow. And now my team's down to about five independent contractors. But I, I do have plans to hire uh, an actual employee who will be on site at SPA available for walk ins. And she'll be starting around August or September. Nice. I'm excited for you. I'm excited to go visit Lux Masson Spa and see what it's all about because. I am in definite need after this pandemic for, to, for, to get stretched my back out and been sitting at this computer desk too long. Yeah, come see us. We'd love to take great care of you. Thank you again so much uh, for joining me on my show. And thank you again for all the information. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to share all this information. Chelsea Powers, Relux Masson Spa. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit The Shades of E dot com.